Okay, this screencast is going to look at the um, extract and export as function in Photoshop CC 2015. There's been some changes on this since the previous version. It's more simplified um, and hopefully will be a bit more straightforward, but it is quite different than the previous version to the 2015 um, Creative Cloud. Okay, I'm going to use um, a royalty free uh, asset that has been created by Alfonso Severo and he's on Dribble, and I've just put the address there. Um, basically, it's just a, a mock up I've just downloaded and I'm going to show you how that works. But that's his work that he offers up for free for people to play around with. Okay, so we'll shoot over to Photoshop, open up this file, and get going. Okay, before we get going, I'll show you how I've set up this job. If I open this up, I have this PSD file that is saved in a folder. So I've saved it in a folder, and when we export all our assets, they will be gathered in this folder. So that's what you need to do to start off with. Create a folder, put your PSD files inside that folder, or job folder, or design job folder, and then um, we'll open it up and get it going in, in Photoshop. Okay, so I've come along and I've opened it up in Photoshop. Um, now what I'll do is I'll just bring this window in so you can see the actual folder here. Um, what I've done is I've um, got my image in here and I've just made these larger I'm on Apple Mac and I've just gone to show view options which is here and I've just made um, the actual icons larger so you can see what's going on. Okay, so you'll notice here if I open up the layers, um, very well organized and everything's named and grouped together. Now, when you are doing something like exporting and breaking up layers and exporting them as separate files, image files to use in an interactive product like a website or, or, or a web app, sometimes it might be a good idea to keep, you know, images in close proximity be, so you can actually uh, sort of shift click them and save them and now put them in groups if they're all in different folders and spread out that can be a little bit awkward to do that um, this one how it's laid out you know is a little bit difficult to do that but um, you know how you organize things organize meticulously but make sure you know so certainly you have certain assets you want to group together and select them all and export them as one type of PNG or, or, or JPEG, they're all grouped together and they're easy to get a hold of. Now traditionally in Photoshop, uh, for many, many years, you would have gone to the file menu and inside the file menu, there would have been save for web. Now it's embedded in the export and here it's called save for the web legacy, which means Photoshop is coming along and sort of moving away from that way of working. Now, if I click on the save for web, it'll be something that you've probably felt familiar with. You have two up or four up. You could have changed it for different types of um, bitmap images. it would tell you a lot of these things are pretty much redundant now. A lot of them are going back to pretty old modem speeds and it give you an idea and you can press things and compare them with the original on the left to the one you're compressing them and take out the colors of the PNG or you could um, you know take down um, the, the quality if it was a JPEG previewing the browser etc now this is still probably a pretty useful way of, of, of extracting images but certainly you were sort of going in there and doing it one at a time and taking them out and the only other way you used to get around it was by losing the slice tool. So you would slice up your images using the slice tool and then take them through safe with web and export them. It was a real cumbersome and time consuming process to do all that. Now there's a different way now. So we'll click cancel. If you have used Photoshop CC 2014, you might have used the extract function and the new um, say export as is, is, is quite similar to that it does have its limitations but it's it, it's been simplified okay so first up um, we're just going to look at how you would do the whole image and that might be the case you've made a graphic and you just want to quickly um, export it as a png or a um, jpeg file so here's my whole graphic image and if i go to the file menu and if i go down to export i can do quick um, export as a PNG 
it will come along um, I'll just name it something differently I put one after it and I click save and it will save it in the folder so there it is saved in the folder now you may be coming along with going mm, but you know how did it change it it's amount of colors and um, it's using so how you can control that if you go to the farm menu and you go down to export and it's got export preferences and we click on here and it has PNG and it gives you some options for your PNG um, it will come along and export it you know it can give you transparency and export them as those sizes also it's got PNG 8 and um, doesn't give you a lot of control over it but it can give you some controls also together if you're going to do those so that's where you would control some stuff and find you know it's not really giving you that much control but that's where you would set those up in there okay so I click OK to that now that does a whole lot and also we can go up here if we wanted a bit more control go file export and this time go to export as again it would do the whole um, image but it gives us the option to do it as a JPEG we can change the compression also you can change the sizes now bear in mind this is a bitmap image and what you don't want to be doing is making your image bigger than its physical size because it will pixelate uh, you get away with reducing it in size but not making it bigger okay so that's another way you would do it and I would come along and save it now the only issue here is you can't really it doesn't give you the option to change the name here as you go through on this one so that's a limitation I would press export but um, I'll just cancel out of that now that does the whole thing so say for example we just want to do a few images it might be the case that you're laying up something for a web app and you just want the actual images all your texts and your buttons you're only going to make that programmatically um, with markup and style sheets so that's just a representation and you won't be using those graphic elements but you will need to have the bitmap photographs of the actual people in the in here or maybe there might be a logo but on the whole it might only be um, the sizes and how they're presented so say for example I've got this guy in the check shirt here I click him and I select the layer now what you will need to do is make sure that they're named uniquely so you know you use the case when I first opened um, this image up it was named um, just in 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 it works okay as layers in Photoshop but when you output it into a folder it didn't like lots of images being called the same thing and it would throw up an error so make sure they're all named uniquely before you export them now once you've got that um, I'll just delete this here okay so once you've got that um, I've got him selected I would right mouse click or control click um, on the side don't do it actually on the icon because you'll get this sort of pop-up uh, do it sort of off the side here right mouse click or control click uh, if you're an Apple and then I would go to you can go to quick export and it'll quickly export that image um, you can go through it and output it or if I go back to export as then it gives me the options where I can control the type of image um, that I want to export and, and get it out on there okay so there your sort of options that you have uh, on there so you could come along and then say okay um, I'll export that image it'll come along and do that and then it will output it and you'll see that one I output as a gif again doesn't seem to be a lot of control of controlling it and um, the quality but it's output it there now say for example I wanted to do two images together so down here I'll click on this one and the guy on with the shirt on the right now it's selected those two images again I'll sort of right mouse click on one of them and then I'll go export as now what I can do here is I can say okay I want one, have one as a PNG and here this one I'm going to have as a um, JPEG right so I've got those set up um, and you can with JPEG take this down and see the quality of it now at 100% you'll see it sort of dropping down the quality so so you can change the quality of those PNG settings you would have some control over saving them with the preferences in the export 
Now, once you're happy with those two images, um, I can then just go to export. Again, it presents me with the folder I set up for the job. And if I scale up here, there are those two images that are in there. Now I'm going to do something, you know, again, a little bit different. Um, that's the case where you're doing these individual images and say, for example, sometimes you're working on a mock-up and you want to go back to it and change it or you made a mistake. And the only way I could do this is by overwriting these and save it. Say if I wanted to change something on here, crop it or make it black and white, I would have to over write it so this is quite a neat feature and again this was still still available in the last version but this is how it works now this time i'm going to go to far menu i'm going to go to generate and i'm going to call it, it generate image assets if i go back there again it will see it selected it's got a little tick on it now nothing much happens in the folder to begin with but what we'll do now is say for example this time I'll go to this guy here with the four and after the name I put dot png okay and then I'll go down to the picture the woman here and again dot png for a file extension I could put jpeg on there so I've called those I've just put the file extensions on them now if I go down my folder here you will see further down here if I can bring this up a bit take that up You'll see it's called the fold. It's, it's created a folder now, which is called um, you know one home assets. Now, why it's called it home assets is it's sort of parent file here is that's what it's called one home PSD. So that's where it gets the name from. So it belongs to that PSD file. Now, if I open that up, here's my images that are in there. So those two images, it's output them. Similar to what we've just done, but I'll just make this a bit bigger. Again, um, with this assets panel, I'll take the uh, sides up a bit so we can see what's going on, and I'll just move around. Now, these are just icons for the image made bigger. Now, the, once that's connected, it's got a live connection to it. While this is still on in the file menu, and this has still got a tick for the image assets, Photoshop is still connected to these files so it can do a live update. So I've got this woman here and she's selected and say for example I just want to edit it and change it. I'm going to do a quick um, change of saturation. So I go to the image menu, I go to adjustments and I say you and saturation and all I do is drag this saturation right down. She's gone to black and white here on the image. I click OK and you'll see it'll process that and change it and make her black and white. Now say for example, I come along and I go, oh no, I don't want to do that. Then I can obviously undo that. And when I undo it, it'll take the picture back live. Or say for example, I've got this image here and I want to maybe change it in some way. I will do, say, what can I do? I'll just get the rectangle tool. And what I'll do is I'll just like come get this bottom half here on this guy's image and I'll just delete it and do that and you'll see it's updated that file so this has got a live connection on it while that's on and that might be useful when you're doing that you might have all your assets in the folder you might want to change them all around and, and, and change them with a live connection otherwise you would have to just keep on exporting them and replacing the old file so if I come along now and say for example turn that off and say I'll go back to this image here and I'll do the same again where I go to adjustments you and saturation and I take down the saturation and I click OK nothing happens because I have turned that off I'll just have a quick go and see if I turn it back on will it catch up retrospectively yes it does okay so they're the different ways you can export it's changed from what it used to say to do with extract assets it's got rid of a number of the options I've probably got rid of too many of them um, personally because you can't control very easily how many colors you save as a, a png uh, and some of the control but it's quite a, a simple and straightforward way of exporting assets and breaking them up. Um, also very important when you are doing photographs for um, web apps and websites 
is you try and get them of the best quality you can visually at the smallest file sizes. I think it's you know it's quite common now that people upload very large images. Um, I had one case where there was only a six page website that was three and a half gigabytes in size because of all the images haven't been optimized for the web and this will make your page load up really slowly. There'll be a lot of drag on the server and also you run out of server space as well. So make sure you optimize your images, look at all the different options, certainly in Photoshop. Sketch 3 also has a um, similar process of optimizing your images and getting them ready and connecting them and exporting your assets. Okay, so that's how you would go about doing that and there have been some changes from Photoshop 2014 to 2015.